Hey, September 4th football season is here. Welcome to ABC 7 Extra. Good evening. I'm sports director Trevor Thompson. For the next half hour, we will be discussing the Battle of I-10. Last night, the Miners and Aggies went to battle at the Sun Bowl and yet another chapter of the rivalry. In case you missed it, we've got you covered. It was the Aaron Jones Show for UTEP. We can get to those highlights here in the first quarter. We're going to take a look at Jones announcing that he is back and maybe better than ever breaks away for the score early. UTEP goes up 7 to nothing in the first quarter. Miners led 24 to 3 at the half, but the Aggies would not go away that easily. Tyler Rogers fools everyone including the camera guy in the third quarter. He takes it to the house to make it a 24 to 10 game, but too much from Aaron Jones on the night. Jones accounted for 249 yards rushing and a pair of scores. This 75-yard scamper to the end zone essentially put the game out of reach. UTEP wins the Battle of I-10 for the eighth straight year, 38-22. The final ahead we will discuss last night's game and what the rivalry means to both schools. Of course, you can email us your comments and questions now at abc7extra at kvia.com. You can also reach us by the phone at 915-496-1771 on Twitter. Just use the hashtag ABC7Extra. Joining us now are UTEP Athletic Director Bob Stoll and NMSU Athletic Director Mario Mocha. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I know you had a, a long weekend. I mean, I know your job is tough to begin with, and then you add the Battle of I-10 to it, and it's going to be a long weekend. Well, it's, it was a fun weekend, though. This is the opening of the football you know, season and a lot of big games, uh, especially today. We had the Texas and Notre Dame game, obviously, but uh, uh, everybody's looking forward to the first game. So it was a long weekend, but it was an exciting one. It really was. That Notre Dame-Texas game, that was a barn burner, 50-47. to 47. Texas comes out on top. I have to say my alma mater, USC, didn't perform too well. So I'm a little down. <laughs> I'm a little down. Uh, UTEP did have a great performance, though, especially Aaron Jones, really announcing that he is, he's back and he's, in, he's full strength. Yeah, it was tough last year after having two great years, you know, freshman and sophomore year, and then being out the whole year last year. And uh, Of course. You know, when he first came, he weighed like 170, and then he was like 190. Well, this year is like 208, 210. This last year, even though he wasn't able to play, he redshirted, sat out, but uh, got bigger and stronger. And, and, of course, he was excited just to play the game. And uh, so he played most of the game. I, I, I was wondering at the end of the game is maybe, maybe we ought to take him out just in case, you know. But uh, Coach Kugler said that he really wanted to stay and just finish the game. You know, he hadn't played in a year and just wanted to finish it out. But uh, he's certainly a talent, that's for sure. Speaking of talents, Larry Rose III, unfortunately, wasn't able to go, still recovering from a minor sports hernia surgery that's going to keep him out four to six weeks. Uh, we were really looking forward, Mario, to seeing the Rose the Third against Aaron Jones. Unfortunately, it just didn't happen this week. Yeah, two years in a row didn't, uh, didn't get to match up that way. But, you know, where we are in our program, and I think Coach Martin's done a tremendous job of, of building it to where it is right now, you know, for us to go and play a very solid Conference USA team on the road, you know, without our leading tackler or leading uh, rusher, especially somebody who, quite frankly, we rely on a lot, and Larry Rose the third makes it really an uphill battle. But nevertheless, uh, while Bob said he had fun, I didn't have as much fun, obviously. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I appreciated the fight of the, uh, the guys, and, and I thought there were some tangible things that I saw um, that says, hey, this, this season could still bode well for us, even though it was a tough to start off with, you know, with, with a loss to one of your major rivals. To the Aggies' credit and Coach Martin's credit, he didn't use Larry Rose III being out really as an excuse at all. Well, certainly in the sport of football, you know, it's next man up. Uh, obviously, there are some people who are, uh, you know, special talents. Uh, whether it's Aaron for UTEP or Larry for us, and uh, you know when you when you don't have those players, you know puts a lot of stress on a lot of other phases of the game. But uh, nevertheless, you know when Larry's ready to come back, he'll be ready, and uh, you know it's just an opportunity for somebody else to step up. If I think it would have really been exciting if had Larry played sure. because he has really a good talent. He had 192 yards against us last year, so. Uh, that would have been a, a great thing for the fans to see those two running back in, against each other. But uh, we just hope he gets well. You know, we've, he's had a, a small surgery, but it take, takes about six weeks, I think, to recover. So hopefully he'll get back, you know, soon. And last year against uh, the Lobos, he put up 260 yards rushing and three scores. Obviously, you guys play the Lobos next week. It's a, it's a big game. 
Chances he's back, chances he, he sits out? You know, it's probably going to be closer to the middle of the week. Uh, you know, we were just, uh, my conversations with the physicians after the game was how was our health, you know, for the players that played. Uh, it would be right at that window where he could come back, but it's all going to depend on how, uh, you know, the team physicians and others uh, uh, evaluate him medically. But you're right. I mean, I think he had 230 uh, at the half. I started <laughs> looking up the record book saying, hey, what, what's the all-time rushing record? Uh, but uh, he did have a great game. He's a great back. Obviously, for us, you know, our first two games are the two rivalry games. You know, I don't know if I'd like to draw it up that way in the future. You'd love to maybe open up against a team. Maybe you can you can feel that uh, uh, like an FCS program. But nevertheless, uh, it's also a great opportunity as we're down with a loss to UTEP. We could be up with a with a big win against UNM. So it is a good opportunity for us. All right, that takes us to our first break. We'll be right back with more on the Battle of I-10. Stay with us. ABC7 Extra, I'm Sports Director Trevor Thompson. We are talking the Battle of I-10, and gentlemen, this rivalry dates back to 1914, so 102 years old. They missed a, f a few years in there because of World War I, World War II, but pretty much played almost every year. What does this rivalry mean, not just to the schools, but to the cities? Well, I think with the proximity that we have, I think there's a lot of pride here. I think it's really beneficial when we're both doing well in and obviously in other sports um, New Mexico State said you know great basketball great volleyball softball baseball and um, I think just the rivalry between the two cities is as creates a lot of interest it, I think it's really good when we play early in the season when you know people you know like to get excited about the game and I, I think that it's easy for us to go up there and watch their games it's easy for them to come down so even if we have uh, only five home games. The sixth game can always be New Mexico State, which would be close. Mario, how important is it for coaches to beat their rivals? I know when you were looking for a, a new men's basketball coach, when Marvin Mincy's left, one of the things you focused on was someone who could beat the Lobos in basketball. How important is that? Yeah, you know, it's critically important because that's what the fans, you know, want to see. Now, as athletic director, I think you have to take some of the emotion out of the analysis and say, hey, you know, are we competitive? Are there reasons why? Uh, you know, our rival has been getting the better of us, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, um, you know, you, uh, whether, whether what conference you're in, what your budget you are, uh, that stuff kind of goes out the window and uh, they are huge games. And I, I do agree with Bob. You know, I think especially from our side, who've been averaging about five home games a year to make up our, our season ticket package, I really want to encourage our fans, you know, in the next couple of years, they got to come over here for this game. It's a quick drive. You know, uh, gee whiz, I walked up and down the stands. I walked around the field about three or four times. Uh, everybody was unbelievably pleasant. Nobody to threw me. anything at you. Nobody did, except the athletic director, I think. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the reality is, uh, it's a great opportunity to have that six home game, make a quick drive. And uh, while we did have people in the stands, I'm going to encourage them to come out even more and more because it's a great opportunity. And, and what does it mean? It means a lot. You know, when I was a student in 1987, I actually came to the first game and somebody was coaching on this stage. I can't remember who it was, but they, they definitely got the better <laughs> of us that game. But uh, who knew I would be sitting in the upper, upper levels of, uh, of UTEP Stadium of the Sun Bowl and uh, Bob would be coaching. Now we're sitting on this stage. Speaking of coaches, uh, Coach Kugler shared his thoughts with us earlier in the week about the Battle of I-10 and what it means to the two cities, if we can take that. I, I think it means a lot to the two cities, you know, El Paso and Las Cruces. There's a lot of people uh, from here in El Paso that go to school up there and vice versa. And, and uh, I think it's kind of split down the line when you live here in the borderland. It's either you're an Aggie fan or you're a minor fan, and they don't like each other. Either an Aggie fan or a minor fan. That's pretty, that pretty much sums it up. So, gentlemen, uh, I want to talk to you about your day-to-day your -day because, as I said earlier, I feel like you guys have one of the toughest jobs in sports. Uh, things just come up all the time. For instance, we recently had the, the news with the equestrian team at NMSU. Sure. Uh, could you just talk about how you handle these things that just pop up seemingly daily? Well, you know, I, I, a lot of the things that pop up usually have to do with the budget. 
you know, uh, uh, revenue uh, and the creation of revenue and the generation of new revenue is becoming more and more uh, paramount to the success of your department as student fees, you know, get limited, state dollars might be drying up, uh, you know, enrollment or uh, tuition, things like that, you know, come into play. So there's a lot of stress on us to sell as many tickets as we can, uh, to uh, get as many uh, donors in the Aggie Athletic Club and any new streams of revenue. And when there is a shortfall, you have to make those tough decisions, um, you know, uh, you have so at New Mexico State, we've got 425 student athletes in 17 programs. It's the last thing any athletic, athletic director wants to do is the uh, discontinuation of a program, and that's what we were faced with. You know, through um, our campus leadership, we were able to save the sport of equestrian for a year, and now we'll see. You know how they do from a private fundraising standpoint, but you know our budget cuts. Uh, before uh, this fiscal year and then currently, you know, right after the fiscal year started, it's really looking like the new normal versus, you know, a blip in the radar. So uh, having to shrink our operation is something that we, you know, just have to do and have to minimally impact, you know, the current student athletes. But it's yeah. a tough call. And one of the things that's happened over the last about six, seven years is with the new TV contracts. Um, about six, seven years ago, example, uh, the Big 12, uh, the amount of money they got for television was, was approximately between seven and twelve million dollars, depending on how many times you were on television. Low being seven, Iowa State and high being twelve. Well, then when the Big Ten got their uh, their own, you know, uh, conference uh, television uh -huh. contracts, all of a sudden they're all getting twenty-two million dollars. Northwestern is the same as Ohio State, so all that started, and now. They've gone from average of maybe seven thousand or seven million to ten million, up to twenty-three to thirty million dollars. But our conferences, so the, the next five, still average about two. So there's this, instead of being a two to seven million dollar disparity, now it's two to twenty-five million dollar dis disparity. And then, again, all the, the additional, you know, the cost of attendance, the additional food, all those different things becomes a, a major item at our level. We're going to go to a quick break. We'll be right back with more on the Battle of I-10 in just a moment. Stay with us. You're watching ABC7 Extra. We are talking the Battle of I-10. And before we uh, talk more about the Battle of I-10 with our guests, I want to hear from InterMSU legendary quarterback Charlie Johnson. His thoughts on the Battle of I-10. Well, and over the years, I love to gloat, especially around old minors. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, I think the bragging rights are tremendous. rivalry but is there a lot of gloating that goes on between the two schools i don't know about you know the the fans you know i'll let the <laughs> fans speak for themselves i know after last year's game you know a little story uh uh, that was obviously on a Saturday night and Sunday Bob and I both had to fly out to Dallas for a Division One athletic directors meeting and obviously the way the game played out I know uh, Bob felt you know a little bad for his counterpart in Las Cruces because <laughs> really I know, bad I felt I, really, well a little bit bad. I know he bought me a cup of coffee and he picked up the cab ride to the hotel because obviously we were at the same place wow, so a uh, gentleman yeah now <laughs> at least gonna, I could do <laughs> after to, after this yesterday's game he's going to be a steak dinner I think because it was a little more one-sided and last year 50 to 47 this year 38 22 but to the Aggies credit they hung in there tough in the in the third quarter even though they're down 21 at the half yeah, you know, uh, as a uh, looking at the game, uh, obviously the stats didn't bear it out, but you know the eye test tells me that our defense got better. You know, we had a harder time getting off the field on third downs, which you know stretches out the game. It just puts a lot more stress. But I thought they were uh, a little more aggressive, a little more uh, heavier up front. So I think that. Uh, 
uh, bears uh, bodes well for Aggie fans, and you know, we're going to find out pretty quick because we got the battle I twenty five, you know, uh, on Saturday. So we hope we have a full house because we're going to need it to uh, to play a pretty good Lobos team. Now, I think what he's saying is true. If you look at both teams now, they're dramatically changed physically. If you look at them, they. Uh, they have huge offensive linemen. Uh, they're more athletic. Uh, I asked some of our offensive linemen, how was their defense this year? And he said, they're, they're a lot, lot better, more stout. And I think both programs are, are moving forward. And uh, I know we're looking forward to the rest of the season. I, I know as soon as they get Rose back and keep healthy, they also do well. Because I, I know Coach Martin is really doing it the right way. And I know Coach Kugler and his staff is also doing a great job. So we're, we're excited about the rest of the season. and. Uh, and I, I know that we'll continue to have the I-10 rivalry with other sports coming up before long, that's for sure. I'm going to watch my pregame handshakes with Coach Kugler, though, <laughs> because I, I, I pop my shoulder back in the socket after the pregame handshake. Just I, ju I usually go with a fist bump with yeah, him, just, right. just to try to settle that. Uh, so no rest for the weary. Uh, big game against the Lobos. Big game against the Longhorns next uh, week. There should be no issue. I mean, <laughs> they only scored, what, 50, 50 points, points against, tonight. The, against Notre Dame. The number so 10 ranked team in the nation. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> it shouldn't be an issue then. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, uh, the Lobos have beaten New Mexico State every year since uh, 2011, I believe, was the last win for the Aggies. You're looking to snap that streak. Yeah, there's no doubt out of, about it. You know, that, that's a big game. Uh, the vast majority of our alums are up in Albuquerque. Uh, it's an area that we need to focus on, you know, with a lot of other things too, from a financial standpoint. So we do need to have a good showing against them. You know, last year, uh, not too dissimilar to the game last year against the Miners. You know, we had a, uh, a double-digit lead uh, midway through the third quarter and just couldn't hold it. So uh, that's one of those games where whether Larry's playing or not, you know, you throw a lot of it out the window and it's going to be emotional. And uh, uh, I'm just hoping that we have a great crowd. I know that, you know, starting off 0-1 isn't what it, uh, our folks wanted to happen, but uh, we do need a tremendous crowd to uh, make, it, make it tough on the uh, tough on the offense uh, when they take the field. So hopefully, uh, you know, we'll have a great crowd at uh, Aggie Memorial Stadium and, uh, you know, end up one and one. And the one thing about it, you know, going to Texas uh, next week, everybody's oh. excited about going to Austin. You know, we have a lot of alumni, certainly. But then the following year, uh, week, we have Army here. That's right. And uh, Chris Park, our senior associate, has been working with Fort Bliss. We have a, a really committee of about 40 people who've been working to have a, a huge event with the, with the Army game. Uh, we're going to have just a, you name it uh, we have parachuters we have helicopters we have tanks we have uh, <laughs> induction into the uh, service we, we have everything going on in that game and we really worked hard to make this very very special though you know and so uh, we're looking forward to that in two weeks that'll be a lot of fun for our fans also September 17th, the date of the game against Army. Gentlemen, I'm also a huge basketball fan, so I have to say I'm looking forward to the, uh, the two matchups in December. What can we expect from the two basketball programs this year? Well, you know, obviously we've got a new head coach. Yeah. Uh, we've got several new players. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people um, thought Paul Weir, you know, our associate head coach, should automatically been the next guy. And I really like Paul, and, you know, we, we knew each other uh, obviously very close. But I thought, uh, as the athletic director, I really wanted to, to take a look nationally. Yeah. And we did conduct a national search, and we did end up back on Paul. Uh, so a lot of people said, well, why'd you waste your time for us? I said, I didn't consider it a waste. You know, we, we had three uh, other uh, applicants, finalists, who uh, we went deep in the NCAA tournament, one in the final four, but we landed on Coach Weir. I thought, uh, you know, the, the goal was to keep what was going well with our program and maybe tweak some things. We need to win a little bit more uh, in the non-conference, there's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. And while <clears throat> you know, looking at uh, our record against the minors, gee whiz, we kind of split it down the middle, I think, in Marvin's tenure, if I'm not mistaken, like nine and nine, you know, we were three and 15 uh, against the Lobos, and that's something that, you know, especially in the sport of basketball, we were, our fans were having a, a little tough time with, and uh, just to focus on that, uh, get a little toughness, uh, but yet keep everything that was good going on well. So I think Paul's the right guy for the job, and it'll be exciting. I can't tell you how many calls I got from viewers asking me, when are they going to name Paul Weir the head coach? Because they wanted him so badly yeah. just because of, they just respected him as an assistant. Sure. And it's nice when it works out, when the fans are happy. But at the same time, yeah. uh, if the athletic director isn't comfortable with it and can't put his pillow, then you have to risk making the fans not happy. And that, that's part of the job. But I was glad that you know, this is one of those situations where it could work out where the guy that you think is the right guy is the one that the fans do as well.
And Bob, uh, Coach Floyd is bringing in a, a pretty good recruiting class by all measures. Right, and last year uh, we had the guard play. We were looking for with Dominic and Omega Harris, et cetera, and we didn't mm -hmm. have the big player because uh, Matt Wilms was injured. Matt Wilms is coming back, and uh, I think he's pretty close to being 100%. And then we have uh, Calvin Jones, who's another 6'11", 7-foot uh, uh, player inside. So I think those two will add some, some size to the players that are coming back. So uh, we're excited about it. I think uh, it, it's going to be a real interesting season. And, uh, and again, our game is always, you know, the Lobo game in basketball. Usually it's split. Last mm -hmm. year you won both, though, I believe. Uh, that's yeah. true, yeah. But usually it, it's a, a split situation, so we'll see. But there's always a lot of excitement in that game. Well, I really, really thank you for your time talking the Battle of I-10 here with us on Extra tonight. I know you had a long weekend, and I uh, hope you enjoy your Labor Days. If you get them off, I'm not sure if you do. I know you have uh, big weekends coming up next weekend, so I'm not sure if there's any rest for the weary. But thank you again for your time. That'll do it for ABC7 Extra. I'm Trevor Thompson. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. Have a great night.